Consensus 1234 invites you to get this with Tony Martin and Tom Gleisner. Thank you very much, The Hives. Welcome aboard Australia. It is Get This. Ed is here. Morning, Tone. He's not eating today on air. <laughs> there were, there were right. notes from the program uh, director on that one. And our co-host today is here. It's Tom Gleisner. Give him a round, Bear. Hey. Thank you. Welcome aboard, Tom. Thank you for that cart applause. I love I love the, <laughs> I love the taped applause because often when you go on shows, they try and get a bit of live applause happening. Yeah. But when not even the producer joins in, you know you're struggling. No, you get that sort of sound and it's, it's more kind of... Uh, yeah. Sad than anything. But they get the sales team in to do it around. <laughs> and they just applaud the ads. That's yeah, all they seem to do. Exactly. Tony, I've got to say, it is just personally, take a moment here, it is a thrill to hear you back on air and back saying the phrase Triple M. <laughs> the last time I heard you utter those words, you were sitting in the back of a Black Thunder Jeep wearing a suede <laughs> bomber jacket, <laughs> handing out boxes of tacos whose use by date had expired in 1982 and urging listeners to stay around for another concrete blonde double oh shot. Oh, my God, concrete <laughs> and now, blonde. now, here we are again. The, the, the circle has turned. Now, uh, look, people listening around the country might not uh, recall that uh, you and I used to host breakfast on Triple, and we did it for five years in Melbourne. We did. It was called Eon FM originally. That's right. <laughs> and uh, then those concrete blonde double shots kicked in, <laughs> and it was magical all the way. And what, what do you remember of those days? I, these petty disputes, we used to be in, in locked in battle with the rival FM radio station. Yeah. And we'd have fights. In fact, I think this one, Ed, you might be interested in this, almost yes. went to court right. over who came up with the idea. We came up with, um, uh, there was a, a double shot Tuesdays, and right. they came up with two up Tuesdays. <laughs> and that virtually made it to the Supreme Court on wow. who came up with the notion of playing <laughs> the same bad song twice on the one day. <laughs> I think Two Up might have just got ahead of us on that one. There were so many shonky and dodgy promotions mm. in those days, oh, yes. and the one you probably remember the best was uh, the Golden Mile. Yes. Do you remember the Golden What's Mile? That? It was it was well intentioned. Yeah. It was an idea of raising <laughs> funds for I can't even know what the charity was. Yeah. Often they were just fronts for the sales department, but <laughs> the idea was to raise money for for a good cause, and we were going to urge our listeners to come down to. A major esplanade in Melbourne, wasn't it? Yeah. And um, line up gold coins, one dollar or two dollar coins. In fact, I think the coins yeah. were quite new at that. Point. The, it was a novelty, the dollar coin. Mm, so mm. we were drawing attention to the new currency, and we were going to make a mile of golden coins, and then donate all the money. Oh, yeah, yeah. And can you just think for a moment how much money that would be? Mm. Like a mile <laughs> of one dollar coins. That's like about a billion dollars. <laughs> Isn't it? Not even the breakfast team got paid that much <laughs> back then. And, and it was it, promoted for weeks. The Golden Mile right. is stretching towards <laughs> you. That's the one. <laughs> and, and on the day, it was a cold, windswept morning on a yeah. bleak exposed part of some Esplanade street and no one was there. No one was walking past to contribute the yeah. said golden coins. Yeah. And so we realised after about half an hour or so we'd, how, many, how many inches had we achieved. Well, there was a big decision had to be made, which was do we preserve the idea of the mile mm. Mm. or do we just get how many of the coins we've got and just line them up? Yes. <laughs> and if we'd done that, it would have been about a golden three metres. <laughs> That's right. So I remember the programme director's gone, no, nah, we've got to stick with the mile idea. It's all around the mile. We'll have to space them apart. <laughs> so there was like about a block between each coin. We, and had, we had security guards who had to stay in contact with talkie, walkie-talkies because they were that far out of sight of each other. Shirley Strawn was guarding two coins and he was running back and forth as kids tried to steal them. <laughs> It was the worst promotion in radio history. <laughs> the golden 212 metres, as it <laughs> came great. to be known. Even then, we were spacing them out. Yeah. Those were the days oh, yes. of radio. Now, look, we've got to talk about uh, a new show that um, it starts tonight. It does. It's called Thank God You're Here. We want to know all the gruesome details. Mm -hmm. Let's do that next on Get This. That's ZZ Top here. Yeah. <laughs> and get this on Triple M right around the country. Tom Gleisner is joining Ed and myself this morning. And uh, I should just point out, thanks to everyone who's called in with Tony Mockbell sightings. It's the latest <laughs> craze. Find Tony Mockbell. And, of course, he's supposedly fled the country. What I love is, uh, Tom, that the, the supergrass who was planning to testify him, he's fled the country. Mm, yeah. I think the judge, I think Judge Gillard's done a bolt yeah. as well. <laughs> everyone involved in the, in the case has just fled. <laughs> But, uh, look, we're here to talk about uh, the new show. Uh, look, I just should point out, people are calling in about segments we used to do on The Breakfast Show. Like, we're talking 15 years mm -hmm. ago on Triple M in, in Melbourne only. Uh, someone has called in asking if you and Tom are going to do View from the Poof. View 
from the Puff. What was View from <laughs> the Puff? That? View from the Puff was Tony and I did a te- we reviewed television for that evening. We went through the highlights, and then it went for about a year, and then we axed ourselves <laughs> because it was so bad. And then we returned with the new View from the oh, Puff. Oh, the new View. Because <laughs> that's that's one of the first radio tricks we learnt. You just add new, no, all new. As soon as something's all new, it's... I was speaking of that. I was do- doing a, a, a bunch of uh, radio interviews uh, yesterday for uh, um, Thank God You're Here. Yeah. And, you, know, you, do, you do them around the, around the country, various regional stations, and you're always given a list of who you're going to talk to. And I, I, I was going to be... They're all zoos or cages. Yeah. Although <laughs> some place, I think on the central coast of New South Wales, it's the new zoo. Oh, and we've I, got I, the new zoo in Adelaide, I think. Oh, okay. We follow the new zoo with John Blackman. Oh, yeah. You know, that's, John was on one of the shows. But the, invariably, you're given the list of names of who you're going to talk to. And it's usually like yeah. Dave O, Jim, Scotty, <laughs> Sue. And then always about 30 seconds before you go to air, a, a harried publicist runs in and says, um, Scotty's no longer part of the team. <laughs> <laughs> There's always one guy that's been axed in the last day or two. And I'm always intrigued to know why. What happened? Oh, look, what would he have done? Some terrible accident to the back of a black thunder. <laughs> well, I remember when I was working at Triple M in Sydney. Mm. Sometimes that would happen. Sometimes you'd, you'd be there and there'd be someone and they'd sort of walk past and give you a wave. And then the next day... Gone. Gone. And no one would just... No one would mention it. Yeah. As if they'd never existed. Barry was, was there one day and the next day it was the all-new Barry. <laughs> <laughs> But, hey, we'll, we'll get back to this kind yes. of uh, our old material in mm. just a moment. But tell us about uh, Thank God You're Here, or as Peter Rosethorn called it yesterday, The Door Show. <laughs> the Door Show, yes. It, look, it, it is a slightly complicated show to explain. Very easy to understand once you see it. But it, there's a touch of deal or no deal about it, I have to admit, <laughs> even, <laughs> even as I'm explaining it. In short, each week we take four performers, well, pretty well-known mm. faces, people with you know great performance abilities and comic timing, and we ask them one by one to step through a door. In some right. cases, we push them through the door. <laughs> right. And waiting on the other side is an entire world. There is a set. There are actors. Indeed, a young Ed here is one of those waiting. Everyone knows what's going on except the key person who's just been pushed through the door. Right. So it's, it's about survival. It's watching someone trying to work out who they are, what they're doing there, and, and just keeping their head above water for a couple of minutes <laughs> and it's mesmerizing to watch that act of survival yeah. now i've noticed you've got you have got great performers people like uh, frank woodley uh, i mean i just can watch frank doing anything yes yeah. just walking down a street is hilarious <laughs> Absolutely. that could be a show it's quite a crowd <laughs> <laughs> and we've got uh, tonight's show we've got fifi box as well peter rosethorn you know of course it was on here yesterday yeah. and from kath and kim uh, and they're fabulous fabulous yeah. performers and and the audience just love watching that sort of high wire act of someone trying to survive and so far we've taped a couple of shows so far nothing's you know gone right, completely right. i think no. true ed we haven't had a complete disaster have no we? no no and we think if, look if it happened we'd just sell the footage to bert newton's <laughs> 20 to 1 worst moments on australian tv so it'd be a win-win either way now what is the criteria for people because you mentioned performers you've got people who can think on their feet is that really you have to have people like that Absolutely. you couldn't just uh you know push um i don't know a sportsman through the door no no in fact some people said oh it's kind of, it's kind of like celebrities doing this and no, and no because no. celebrities who are just who are nothing but celebrities are good at showing up at openings of nightclubs but they couldn't <laughs> they couldn't do this unless we did a nightclub scene and maybe that'd yeah. be excellent uh, but no you've got there's got to be performance skills here right. so we so we're very carefully selecting people such as we mentioned like um Angus Sampson, Fifi, yep, yep. Frank Woody, Sean McAuliffe's. Um, oh, right, yeah. Well, I think we're going to drag Glenn Robbins. Santo, right. I think, is going to do one. So it's, it's um, that sort of calibre. And do people try and, uh, you know, cheat? Do they try and find out what the scenario is going mm. Ed is nodding. Yeah, yes, yeah, is yeah, that yeah. right? Oh, yeah, before the show, mm. or um, my friend Josh, who did it a little while up, the week before, yes. spent the whole week trying to trick me into telling him what was going on. Yeah, we, we, so we've started uh, putting them in orange jumpsuits and just locking them <laughs> in dark rooms. <laughs> and uh, hopefully the, the silence will sort of uh, pervade. They, we won't tell them anything. And in fact, they're not even given their costume until about a right. minute before they go out yeah, right. onto stage. So we really do try and keep that element of surprise and peril. And I'm sitting there as I'm playing the role of... Yes. Mm, judge. Mm. Yeah. Now, don't let that word judge put you off. I'm not, no. I'm not one of your nasty. No. You're not going down the Bernard King path. <laughs> <laughs> no. Rehearsal, rehearsal, <laughs> rehearsal. <laughs> Do you remember the woman sang that song once? So we're going back to potluck now. On um, the song from A Chorus Line where it's uh, Kiss the Day Goodbye. And, right, uh, right. And it was Point Me Towards Tomorrow. He goes, Point Me Towards the Door. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, the yeah. one. I'm not. I'm not him. I'm. I'm not your no. Dicko or your Tom McKinney. I'm more your Evie Hayes from Young Talent Time. A, a reference <laughs> might be lost on you, Tony. But Ed, you remember? I'm she there. Was, she was kind and nurturing, <laughs> and I'm supportive. And I'm that. 
I'm that sort of role. I'm not there to sort of you know pick people apart. We don't even we don't we don't vote people off. There's none of that. Right, no right. evictions. It's a great vote. Mm, it's probably the first show on Channel Ten not to have SMS voting. <laughs> <laughs> people still SMS anyway. They can, yes. In fact, if you don't think we should have SMS voting, you know, ring now. I'm but, still not even sure what SMS voting is. <laughs> That's why I have it on the show, Tom. He explains the real world to me. <laughs> exactly. And we've and the whole thing's beautifully held together by Shane Bourne. Right. Yeah, Bourne. Bourne is our host, and it's just fabulous to see Shane. Yeah. Back on the screen because obviously he brings you know yeah. great experience and comic timing and his own seniors card. So <laughs> he's the complete package for the show. We're very happy. All right, now Tom, do you want to stick around and uh, talk rubbish with us for the rest of the program? I'd be delighted. Let's do that. Thank God you're here. Goes out tonight in all states. I'm assuming. Indeed. Seven thirty on Channel Ten. It's not up against anything good. So I reckon <laughs> you're going to be fine. <laughs> and we'll talk more with Tom in just a moment. I'll get this. It's talk. It is indeed. That's cold play here at Get This Triple M. We've got Tom Glasner sitting in. Ed, have you received some information? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, to Mel, she told us that sixty-four thousand three hundred and seventy-three dollars and sixty cents is a mile of one-dollar coins. How did they work that out? She went out and did it. <laughs> Went out and had a golden mile <laughs> during the cold play. Yeah. <laughs> she's good, that Mel. <laughs> it's good to know. Thanks, Mel. Tom is here because, uh, well, because he's a friend of the program and because, mm-hmm. thank God, you're here, goes out this evening. Now, you just happened to mention in passing yeah. that Ed is part of the, the cast. He's yeah. part of the ensemble, nonetheless, we refer yes. to them as, because each, each week as our performers step through the door of doom, they're met by uh, a bunch of fabulous actors who, who know what's going on, but, of course, they have to think on their feet because right. the scene could go any number of ways, and yeah. Ed is one of those people who anchors the, uh, the entire Ed's not project. been sure whether he's allowed to mention that all week. Oh, he's okay. not sure whether it's meant to be a secret. <laughs> no, no, no. You're allowed to say it. <laughs> Out of the bag. Well, it's, it's great. And, and Tom was saying before about the surprise and the look on their face, mm. the look on Rose Thorne or, or Samson's face or Fifi Box's face when they walk through the door and they look at you in the eye and you say, yes. thank God, he is just... And you guys are all naked and they're going, yeah, where is yeah, this yeah, going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they know where it's going yeah, pretty soon pretty after that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just great. Yeah. I'm uh, going. What we do on this show is we just uh, tear interesting stories out of the paper, mm-hmm. attempt to fashion it into a program. Uh, <laughs> Playboy is chasing the pink dollar. Playboy magazine is going to be coming out with a gay version. This is the latest news. Nice. Um, do you remember? Uh, we of course have met uh, Harry Shearer a few times. Yes. I love that phrase, the pink dollar. Yes, I'm, that's, that's thrown me ever so slightly, but move on. Chasing the pink dollar. Well, Harry Shearer, uh, when he, of course, the vo- voice of uh, Mr. Burns and Smithers and uh, Derek Smalls and yes. Spinal Tap, and came out to be in an episode of Frontline, been on the panel a few times, and he wrote a fantastic musical, stage musical, called J. Edgar, with an exclamation mark, <laughs> about J. Edgar Hoover. And he, I think it was going on in Chicago, and I said, is it going to go to Broadway? You've got to take that to mm. Broadway. And he's gone, we can't go to Broadway. We've hit the pink ceiling. <laughs> 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 Apparently Harry and his group, not gay enough for Broadway. Isn't that, right? Isn't that yeah. a great phrase? Wow. Hitting the, the pink, pink ceiling. ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the gay playboy is coming your way. Ben Lee has been hit by a flying bottle. Who would throw something at Ben Lee? Is that music criticism, do you think? That's taking it too far. <laughs> Does that I constitute mean... a review? I'm not sure. <laughs> well, at, uh, at the Download Festival, mm-hmm. uh, a big metal festival that my yep. friend Luke goes to every year, they throw bottles, Yeah. but they wee in the bottle first oh, okay. oh, and right. then launch it at a band right. that they don't like. And I said, what if you do like the band? He said, you wee in two bottles and throw two. Uh, it's oh, like a right. Molotov cocktail <laughs> that would never light. Have <laughs> you thought about uh, maybe in- instituting that policy on Thank God You're Here? <laughs> <laughs> just cut to Tom. Hang on a second. Just go for another 30 seconds. Just improvise. <laughs> I've got the 1.5 litre. It was a mistake. <laughs> a glass and a half. <laughs> uh, what else have we got here? Listen to this. There's going to be uh, Jessica Simpson who... Uh, do, you f- do you find no. Jessica Simpson attractive? No, no, no. I struggle. She looks to me like a skull that somebody has sprayed with fake tan and put a wig on the top of. That's just me. I'm an old person, so I take my... But she was in the fantastic Dukes of Hazard movie. Oh. Yes, yes. And she's now going to be in the equally fantastic Baywatch movie. There's going to be a Baywatch movie. <laughs> right. And they're trying to convince David Hasselhoff to be in it. I don't understand that. Isn't the idea with these movies to get new people yes, to be in yes. them? Although, didn't, didn't the guy, uh, Bruce, um, who played Batman, he offered to be in the Batman movie. Adam West. Well. Adam West, that's right. That would have oh, been wow. so but good. seriously, he genuinely said, oh, you know, I'm, I'm available. They haven't called me yet. Yes, because you're 87. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a letter. This is how daggy I used to be. I once wrote a letter to the Zucker Brothers, right. you know, did uh, a yeah, yes. flying high oh, airplane right. and mm. top secret, suggesting that in the second Naked Gun movie, they should cast Adam West and Burt Ward as the mayor 
and the assistant mayor right. and play it exactly like Batman and yes. Robin, but with no references to Batman and Robin, just oh, the interplay. No and, the, of course, the exits. We've got to get down to the mayor's office. <laughs> <laughs> Those fantastic Adam West exits. What response did you get? Nothing. Never no, heard. No. No. Never <laughs> heard right. from the Zuckers. That'd be right. <laughs> just a restraining order. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, look, yesterday on the program, we went to a fairly offensive press conference mm. with Peter Costello where he was going on about um, man love. Yeah, tumescence uh, was the most offensive thing I heard. I don't think the word fount of tumescence has ever been heard on Triple M before. <laughs> so already, you know, we're way out in front. Fount of tumescence Friday. There's a, there's a segment for you. Double shot tumescence. Cold hard trousers. <laughs> But uh, we had a few complaints, and in the interests oh. of balance, uh, we're going to um, go across to Kim Beasley. Of course, the uranium issue is on everyone's mm. minds. So let's cross there now. Mr Beasley, do you expect the Labor Party to form a unified view with regards uh, to uranium at any time in the future? No, of course not. Why would we do that? That's not what the party's about. Uh, agreeing on things. I mean, why would we go down that path? Well, the suggestion is that the party's left is about to cave in on the three minds policy. Oh, well, look, if, if that happens, I'll, I'll change my mind back again. I mean, we can't have the Labor Party having one view on things. But it's this kind of squabbling that's seen your approval rating drop to its lowest point ever. I don't agree with that. I think it can go a lot lower. I think I can get it down to single figures. And I'm not going to be able to do that if we start having unified views. Right. Uh, just what is the Labor Party about these days? Look, you've seen the news. It's about fat blokes with glasses and beards standing in a town hall on a cold night shouting at each other about things that people don't really care about anymore. Versus blokes in shiny suits who are basically the Liberal Party with a different coloured guernsey on. And we've worked very hard to get it to that point. I'm not just going to piss all that away now. Oh, Mr Beasley, do you realise that uranium earns us more than half of what we earn from cheese exports? Look, I like cheese. Of course I like cheese. Who said I didn't like cheese? Nobody. Cheese is great. Are you suggesting we could build a reactor that's powered entirely by cheese? Um, no. Cheese power. A cheese-powered economy. It's clean, delicious energy. What are you talking about? Cheese. I think we should be exporting cheese. Well, we are exporting cheese. I love cheese. I want some cheese. Can I have some cheese? Uh, Mr Beasley, if we can put cheese aside for a moment, um, what do you say to these polls that suggest that you haven't got a hope in hell of winning the next election? I don't say anything. I just get photographed digging a hole. Look at that. Or patting a kitty on the head. Waving from a plane. We're eating some cheese. I really like cheese. Yes, um, you mentioned that. D does Martin Ferguson like cheese? I don't know. You'd have to ask him. But if he does like cheese, then I don't like it. And if he's middling on cheese? Well, then I'll be photographed at a school, patting a kitty on the head, smiling for no reason at all, sending him on his way, saying, when you grow up, son, have some cheese. Right, we're just mentioning cheese for no reason at all now, aren't we? Have you got some cheese? I'd love a bit of cheese. Do you think it's possible a piece of cheese would do a better job leading the Labor Party? I don't know. Do the public like cheese? Um, yes, I, I think they do. Oh, well, no, then I'll be staying on. Get this. Doesn't turn me on, but now and then I don't mind hearing it. The Census 1234 on Triple M. Let's get this on Triple M around the country. Tom, we're going to be talking about the stupidest show on TV next. It's not going to be, thank God you're here, but there has been a poll done, and where would radio stations be without <laughs> polls? <laughs> That's next. I'll get this. That's a hard take on me here <laughs> at Triple M. Let's get this. Uh, Tom Gleisner is co-hosting today. Uh, we used to do the breakfast show on Triple M in Melbourne probably 12, 15 years ago. And I think we may have played that song a few times. On high rotation, I suspect. <laughs>
Um, you know, we were called Tommy G and the Fat Man. We were so embarrassed to use our real names. Yeah. And we were surrounded by DJs who just love nothing more than saying, you're listening to Ken Bruce. This is the Ken Bruce Hour. Coming up next, me, Ken Bruce. And, <laughs> and, it, and it was, for us, it was like, just kind of felt icky using your own name. It was also a, a small tax yeah. issue as well, I suppose, that we, we tended to use... Uh, yeah, names, that, didn't we? That's right. Like Ed actually said to me before we went to, he wanted to be called Rob on here. He was <laughs> yeah. embarrassed to use his own name. Yeah, I don't know why. It's I mean, saying your own name. I know, on the panel, yeah. all those years of the panel, yeah. I'd, I'd introduce the panel each week. Yes, yes. I could never bring myself to say my own name. I'd yeah. say, join us, Glenn Robbins, Rob. You know, I would work my way along, but I couldn't say, and me, Tom Gleisner. Oh, but now people just love to say their own name on TV. Constantly. But I know, so I'm still to this day known as that guy from the panel. I still get to. <laughs> <laughs> and that's who you are. But I still get, uh, people will occasionally uh, yell, Fat Man! <laughs> at me, which is, of course, the most mystifying thing you could yell at a very thin guy with glasses. At best ironic, really, isn't it? <laughs> now, look, uh, I think it, it, you better queue up the, the sting. I'm, I'm sorry, Beer, I didn't uh, urge you to queue up the sting for. Oh, oh. No, oh, not that. No, lose that. No, that's no, just no offensive. Is. Lose that. Talkback Mountain. That's what we want to hear. Hey. When in doubt, Bear just seems to play people having sex. <laughs> they must want rooting. That's what I was cured to do. There you go. He's what? got it queued up. We don't even know that he does. What does, he, yeah. what does that say about his home life? No, today we're going to, because of course, uh, Thank God You're Here starts tonight on Channel 10 at 7.30. That's a top view. But yep. what is the stupidest show on TV? There's been a poll done, of course there has, by uh, TV Guide. Hundreds of people from around the country... Uh, voted for The Biggest Loser mm. as the stupidest show on TV. Ironically, The Biggest Loser is a huge hit with 1.3 million people tuning in each uh, weeknight to watch it. Do you watch The Biggest Loser, Tom? I do, and I, I can't see why it's any more exceptional than any yeah. other of the reality shows. At least they're not ice skating. I mean, they're <laughs> just losing weight. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, right. is there an issue? But it's, the thing about The Biggest Loser is it's, it's sort of... The way they get away with it is it's about uh, triumph. Yeah. And it's about body image, mm -hmm. and it's about improving yourself. Mm -hmm. And there's inspirational yeah. music uh, played throughout. But I notice when people watch The Biggest Loser, that's not what they're nah, thinking. Right. This is what it sounds like when you watch The Biggest Loser. Oh, oh. so I'm fat that bloke! Oh, look at that one. He's the fattest. He's the fattest. Oh, that is disgusting. Oh, look at that guy. Oh God. Oh no. Why do they put them in singlets? Why? Oh, look at her. Oh, look at her. What's oh. she doing on TV? God. Why would she go on TV? Right, but they let her. Oh, Why my would they let God. her? Oh, this, oh, yeah. oh, this just. Oh, God. oh no! Jesus no, Christ! Don't let them swim. Don't let them swim. That is what it sounds like. <laughs> don't you find? And it is so. It's so disconcerting to see overweight people on TV. Not because there aren't overweight people yeah. out there, but you just don't see them no. on TV. It's one of those things. And, yeah, you do take this, this kind of perverse pleasure in going, well, at least I'm not that fat. <laughs> but, but don't you think it would be a better show if the idea was to start out thin and just get yes. fatter and fatter <laughs> and fatter? <laughs> and just see who can stack on the most. Mm. And then... It's a sort of there and back deal. You've then got to lose it all. Oh, okay. Yes, I think that'd bad. be a great that's, idea. That's clever. The, obviously, this um, poll of yours, Tony, didn't uh, uh, go right up to last night when we had When My Boobs Went Bust on Channel 7. <laughs> Are that. you serious? That was that, was, was that an hour? Was well, that an I, hour? You know what? I suspect it started out as a serious sort of American documentary on silicon implants, <laughs> and they realised no one's going to watch that, no. so they re rebadged <laughs> it as when my boobs went bust. It's Compulsive a, viewing. That was a whole hour? Oh, well, I, I taped it and fast-forwarded through the ad, so <laughs> well, I guess it was, yeah. It was just an hour of exploding tits. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Fantastic. No, 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 hey, hey reenactments, come on. Sorry. You know. All right, what were the, uh, the top ten these were the votes for? And, and I should point out, a lot of these shows are incredibly popular. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Big Brother was voted second uh, most yeah. stupid. Uh, then the Big Brother spin-off Friday Night Games tied for third place with Magda's Funny Bits. Uh, funniest Home Videos was fifth. What? Followed. You don't... Uh, I love Funniest Home Videos. Oh, yeah, no, it's always good for love. Hey, there was a letter in one of the TV guides this morning about Magda's Funny Bits, and it's a classic letter. We used to get this with TV shows. We used to make it. goes, I've got two words to say about it. Not funny. Oh. <laughs> How often did we get that, Tony? Not funny. Funny. Not funny. Do you know where that? You know how people love to say two words. You know where that comes from. No. That was in uh, probably my favourite movie of all time. If you just want to have a good view on a Saturday night, Midnight Run with Robert oh, De Niro yes. and Charles Grodin. 
and he go, the joke is he goes two words and it's shut the f up. Oh, okay. <laughs> and in the days of, I'm not sure if it's still censored yes. on TV, but it was always two words shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they would change yeah, it, it to. Kate Kate Langbrook insists that she saw on an episode of Big Brother. One of them said to the other, "I've got two words for you: hypocrite." <laughs> Oh, look, Big anyway, Brother, we, what else was in the digress. top? Uh, the Bold and the Beautiful uh, narrowly defeated Ten's Up Late Game Show with Hot Dogs. No. <laughs> uh, the Burt's Family Feud Extreme Makeover and the Georgie Parker hosted Brain Teaser Clever. Um, I, it's, I don't like seeing Burt's show in there. But I mean, no. I, think that, I think what people are saying is it's just not the ideal vehicle for Bert, no, really, no. is it? It's very tight. The, he, he's not allowed to do... Bert's at, at his best when he's allowed to sort of, you know, deviate from the screen. Yeah, yeah. And, he, and shows like that are so tightly formatted. There's too much to get through. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, let's find... Have you got any... Uh, yeah, I'm going to go for Survivor Australia. Right. Why is that so stupid? Why? They, no one watched it. That's mm. what I mean. Mm. I mean the kind of... They put the American one out. It rates its pants off. Yeah, but I the American ones, had, they had the big budget, didn't that's they? they what went, I'm saying. They went to Guatemala and yeah. the Amazon. Uh, we, ours was in Adelaide from memory. Yeah. It just, it just <laughs> Adelaide coastline. Have, yeah, it just didn't quite have the uh, You can kind of impact. see supermarkets mm, in the background. Mm, you think, mm. we just walk over there. Shot on video <laughs> and, you know, on one camera. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, but, I, but you're right. It was, it was a I mean. poor comparison, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, let's find out what the, uh, the listeners think. We want to hear what your vote would be for the stupidest show on TV. Remember, you can also... Also, you know, have cable TV shows. You can go into the early hours of the morning, anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the stupid stuff happens. Give us a call at Talkback Mountain on, get this, the number is one triple three five three. Have a nice day. That's Bon Jovi. It's Triple M. It's get this. And we're climbing a certain ooh, mountain. Ooh. It's Talkback Mountain. Let's hear that sound again. And see. Tom. <laughs> what is that? What do you make of that? Yodeling. It's oh, yeah. someone yodeling, inspiring what? A cat to fall off a mountain and <laughs> land on an alarm clock. Yeah, that's pretty much sets up the uh, segment. Is that what it is, Ed? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mankind's greatest achievement. Okay, look, um, we're talking about the stupidest show on TV. The, the most interesting new show on TV for mine is Thank God You're Here. Mm -hmm. uh, what's going on behind that door? Find out tonight on Channel 10, 7.30. But uh, to your show, I'm enjoying at the moment, Iran's fastest underwater missiles. Have you seen that one? <laughs> You think everyone's just staying to go, oh, my God, they've got an actual army. <laughs> We're going to get blowed up good. Iran's fast. When's that on? Uh, it's on the news every night. Oh, right. They've got yeah, some yeah, real yeah. fast missiles. And they're not speeding up the footage. That's no. what I thought at first. Oh. Hang on. Al Jazeera's just speeding up the footage to make the missiles look faster. Yeah, but what wow. is the stupidest show on TV? Tom Gleisner, uh, Tommy G and the Fat Man, for those uh, <laughs> who remember the 1980s. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, have a listen to who we've got on the line. Michael, are you there? Hey, how you going? Where are you calling from, Michael? Uh, I'm in Brisbane. Oh, uh, what's nice going? Well, that didn't sound like you were very happy about that. Uh, it's a bit cloudy and rainy today. Yeah. Oh, right. We're, we'll send you a check for that weather report. Thank you very much. Yeah. What's your vote for the stupidest show on TV? Uh, my wife likes to watch EastEnders. Oh, EastEnders. I can't handle it. EastEnders. What, what do you... Just a bunch of pommy gits sitting around a pub or yeah. having a whinge about something. I'm you know, so the... glad you said... Because I... Listen to this. My wife is addicted to EastEnders. I get a pay if I don't video it every night. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm the same. It's kind of neighbours with pale skin and bad teeth, isn't it? Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Do you find... It's terrible. You, do, you, do you find yourself lapsing into the phrases they use on the show, though? Oh, too right, brother. What one have you picked up? <laughs> Oh, yeah, uh, sorted. What is it? Sorted. Sorted. Sorted, sorted, sorted mate. Done and dusted. Yeah. Done and dusted, sorted, yeah. My favourite, my favourite one is, because a lot of the phrases sound quite rude, even mm. though they aren't, yeah. it's, oh, you're going to be taking me up the allotments next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. don't you go taking me up the allotments. Yeah, we'll go and have a nail. <laughs> a nail. Yeah, you're sorted. Down. Yeah, is sorted. it the, the Queen Vic? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, gee, well, so, well, that's it. Sure. I'm going to go with that one as well. Thank you very much, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Uh, Nikki, are you on the line? Are you there, Nikki? Hello. Nikki, what is your choice for the stupidest show on TV? Australian Princess. Oh, Australian Princess. What do you win, oh, Nikki? What do you actually win if you win that show? You don't become a princess. I have no princess. idea. I watched it once, and I saw these females get so excited. They had two hundred dollars to go and buy a ball gown in Sydney, <laughs> and wow. then. I don't know. I actually think they're going to become some sort of Australian princess. They meet a prince. I'm actually not sure, but I just think yeah. it's so ridiculous mm. that 
females can get on the television and think they're going to become an Australian princess. <laughs> Not great. Australian princess up late. That's a good show. <laughs> should check that one out. They take the gowns off. But, uh, Sorry, you uh, suggested, Ed seemed to be suggesting they should become an actual princess. Yeah. They should inherit some kind of fiefdom. Yeah. I thought, <laughs> and rule with an iron fist <laughs> over lesser people. Yes. Some serfs. You win some serfs. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a top view. Uh, Thanks, Brad. Mickey. I think Brad is on the line. You there, Brad? Yeah, hi, Tony. How you doing? Not bad. Where are you calling from? Yeah, I'm calling from Brisbane as well. Oh, hey, okay. that demographic. And what's going on? What is the show that's the stupidest show to Brisbaneites? The stupidest show I've seen recently is on Channel V. It's at night. It's called Amber Ladies. It's oh. from Russian, one of the Russian countries. Yeah. And it's ladies wrestling in honey. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and um, what's stupid about that? Yeah, yeah. what's your point? <laughs> well, the, the it's not long enough. I think it's the dubbing that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and it's basically it's just half an hour of when will someone's top come off? Really, yeah. that's pretty much what it is, isn't so it? So you've watched it, Tony? I've watched it. <laughs> I've watched it again and again and again, <laughs> how, just, how, just to see how stupid it can get. But how uh, how's your range of movement in honey? Does it slow you down at all? How do they? How do they go? I'm not sure that I have seen this one. I, there's, there's another one where they wrestle in a different condiment. A molasses, I think. It's a, <laughs> it's a Ukrainian version, Tony. I think. Yeah. And how so, do you win? Yeah. What? what, what? Artistic behaviour. Uh, ah. There's, oh. there's judges. You get technical merit and <laughs> smearing, smearing the whole. Yeah. All right. Is there going to be any of that kind of action on? Uh, thank God you're here. One of the major scenarios tonight will involve honey. That's correct. <laughs> thank goodness. I think Jeff is on the line. You there, Jeff? Yeah, I'm here, mate. Good morning. Good morning. What's your stupid show? Uh, well, the Friday night games, yes. and particularly the clown doing it, that hot dogs. I mean, he's got a voice cross between Dave Hughes and uh, Stephen Kernahan, the old footballer. But mm. uh, he's uh, a bit of a try-hard, and uh, I think the other girl, Bree, she's there for her boobs. But uh, <laughs> there's really not much else on on the Friday night. You're sort of stuck with watching it, unfortunately. <laughs> right, there you go. <laughs> Um, you know, it's actually a bit of a rip-off of, yes. a, of a show that Tony and I were big fans of in the yes. younger days uh, called It's uh, a Knockout. Yes, I went. I went to It's a Knockout. Because oh, this was in Brisbane, wasn't no, it? No, it was sort of uh, on the Gold Coast, sort of near Dreamworld. Mm -hmm. mm. Is that the one that they used to chuck the guys in the pool all the time? Oh, yeah. yeah. As dressed as pirates, thank That's you. That's right. <laughs> and hosted by? Uh, uh, Billy Ray someone, no, someone? Billy J. Smith. That's it. Billy J. Smith and uh, Jackie, Jackie, Jackie McDonald. McDonald. Fiona, oh, Fiona McDonald. McDonald. No, I think it was Jackie. It was, they, they were one and the same. You never saw them in the same room. Right. Billy J. Smith's catchphrase was when some, anyone fell over and was lying on the ground like with a broken neck, he's fallen over. He's fallen over. That was a fantastic catchphrase. And when they got there, because everyone wanted to support Queensland mm. and sit in the yeah. Queensland section, we got there late and had to support South Australia. Oh dear. And we just didn't. Every <laughs> Queens, we, mm. we had to wave these little yellow like plastic flags they gave you and we yes. just put ours down and sat in our hands. So, so Friday Night Games is very similar to It's a Knockout. Oh, well, well that's a fantastic fantastic selection of stupid programs thanks to everyone who climbed Excellent. the mountain today and uh look we're gonna you're gonna stick around for more tom i'd be delighted you're not getting out of here yet <laughs> and don't forget thank god you're here tonight on channel 10 at 7 30. get this i have to go okay you know a segment's gone too long when the person you're talking to has to go the census one two three four on triple m that split ends because we like a sailor's hornpipe uh from time to time here at get this Almost time to wind things up. I've had a ball doing this with you, Tom. We haven't done this for Love years. It. Absolutely. I've heard the word fiefdom used <laughs> <laughs> on Triple M. I think every day we should choose the most bizarre word that's crept into the show, and that'd have to be it for today. Well done. Uh, look, we've had a lot of people. Here's a bizarre word for you. Podcast. Uh, yeah. A lot of people have been calling up saying, where's the podcast? Mm. And the thing, it's all about copyright music. That's yeah. really the issue, because a lot of our spots, like, for example, the Ed documentary, a lot of people want to hear that, has copyright music. So we've got to yeah. get the lawyers oh, are yeah. up on the case. But don't worry, we will get round to it eventually. Excellent. You can just have the talking bits though, can't you? You can, you, pod, you can yeah. podcast them. But yeah, that's that's not the whole show. You just don't want people to think, oh, I didn't have much that day. Mm. You know <laughs> what I mean? I mean, it might be true, but you don't want to think too much. <laughs> that's right. Uh, just a few um, stories we have to get to. Thank God you're here, of, of course. I'm, have I mentioned it enough, do you, you think, have. Tom? Contractually, thank you very much. Oh God. Let's talk about McLeod's daughters, for God's sake. Let's, you know, <laughs> let's even up the ledger here. <laughs> I just heard that that was... Um, uh, very popular in New Zealand, McLeod still. Yeah, it. So they, there's a New Zealand actress in it. I think they uh, very uh, cannily. Uh, it's Tim Finn, but it's um, right. no, they very cannily <laughs> cast uh, a New Zealand girl in it. So yeah, it's got yeah. that trans Tasman. Because not all Australian shows work in on New Zealand TV. Do they? They're a bit no. resentful sometimes, aren't they? Over there, they are very. Well, I'm trying to think. Uh, 
which ones have baffled them the most. Because, you, you, you know, you sort of think New Zealand would just must take shows from everywhere else, yeah. but you've got your own homegrown. You've got stuff like Shortland Street. Shortland Street. Do you remember SBS ran Shortland Street? And it lasted yeah. about three weeks yeah. because they realised people were just tuning in to laugh at the accents. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it pretty I much was. I was once in New Zealand and I saw, what's your equivalent of the Logies? Do you have this sort of uh, they, they, I don't know what it is now, yeah. but they when I left the country in the mid-80s, there was one called, wait for it, the Gofters. Hey. <laughs> it was called the, Catchy. the well, Gofters. Well, I saw the equivalent of the Gofters red carpet special and it's so bizarre watching people that you've never seen in your life uh. roll up and swagger down <laughs> a carpet like they're famous and you go oh, no that could be the chauffeur for all I know <laughs> that's right they, 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 a lot of them have to go around three or four times <laughs> Kerry Ann Kennelly style uh, we didn't get to a lot of the big stories today um, there's going to be a movie a biopic of Michael Hutchins do we want to no. who's yeah. going to play him they'll get that guy from the rock star yes, show JD what's oh, his JD. name yes. they'll get him but don't you just, doesn't your mind, this is how my mind works, what's that end scene going to be not, like? Not oh. pleasant. It'll be, no, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, it'll go like this. Michael, are you there? Just, oh my God, <laughs> Mr. Hutchins, what have you done? <laughs> and then the camera will just pull away yeah. down the corridor. And we'll never like, see it, it'll be very tasteful. We'll, never, we'll just see a dangling pair of toes. <laughs> now that's ugly, I don't know why we went there. No, but... Oh. I, Let's get this. That's why. Uh, here's, you know, there's, there's, I, ha, you know, I have a number of uh, obscure medical problems. So I spend a lot of time in hospitals, oh. and really, there's never enough uh, money for people in hospitals. Listen to this though: nurses at a Melbourne hospital have been given whistles to sound the alarm for medical emergencies. Oh, okay. oh, They're right. just given a whistle. The whistles uh, were to be blown when the uh, the patients. The, the idea is that when the nurse detects a life threatening situation or a respiratory arrest they blow the whistle that's just taking the piss isn't it really <laughs> <laughs> respiratory arrest check this out <laughs> oh, thank you. look what oh, i can so do much better <laughs> i think it's time to wind up proceedings on that tasteless note here again. i can't believe i decided hey the whistle thing that'll be a great ending <laughs> preceded by michael hutchins death oh god I think we've, we've ended on a beautifully upbeat note thanks for coming in tom thank you tony and ed it's been a delight to be yeah, here lovely. i think we know when that show is on it's on tonight on channel 10 at 7 30 uh well yes there'll be more get this later in the week i'm certainly hoping and i think the key phrase today was fount of tumescence <laughs> And we'll be back tomorrow with Fifi Box. Come on. And it's all thanks to Census 1234.